Hello, hello to all the amazing people that you are here with something fresh, something new and something a little bit different this time. <laughs> so the developers of the game, The Dungeon Beneath, contacted me via email and they told me like some stuff about this game. Uh, it came out like two years ago or so, a little bit more. And it seems like they are going through a refresh campaign. They've been updating this game this whole time and they are trying to like get some more exposure, I guess. So they're sending emails out and they were kind enough to provide a steam key as well so thank you very much for that and i was like yeah sure i'm gonna try it out so i sat down i recorded a bunch of this game and then i went to check the videos and the music is way too loud <laughs> so yeah so this will be me narrating my playthrough it's gonna be a little bit different a little bit new so yeah here for abaddon what a terrible fate uh, so music in the background I recorded from the game and it's gonna be a little bit repetitive. So first five episodes will be na me narrating and then after that it's just gonna be like normal. I actually remember to do it. So here's our party and uh, yeah, I'm like probably like doing an intro right now. Okay, this will be so weird. <laughs> what a terrible fate, terrible fate indeed. Well, there's no turning back now. Right, so there will be no sound effects for first five videos, really sorry about that, but game is pretty cool and totally worth it. So in the top left we can see like our party 405, we can see we have one coin. In the top right we see floor 1 out of 13. We see some people here that we're gonna have, 3 HP, 1, uh, one attack, 4 speed, 3 speed, 1 speed hero, oof that was fast. And off we go, <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, now I know a lot about this game. Okay, no reward here because this is our first run. This is our first run with our, um, well, uh, like tutorial quote unquote champion. Okay, so here we can see we can move people backwards and forward. Uh, so the game, de uh, the game uh, developers like describe this game as a uh, rogue light auto battler, and I think they're maybe not giving themselves enough credit. It's basically a turn-based tactical game. Uh, you you set people up in the locations that you want, and then they will go and strike the enemies in front of them most of the time. Some people can only attack from the back, like this dude here. And it also summons a dove after the first round is done, so the dove will be able to tank ahead. So that we will be using that a lot. And then we got our hero. Um, if the enemies does not have a valid target in front of them, they will, the damage will go into a hero. If a hero dies, I believe, yeah, when the hero is defeated here, it says, then the battle is done and we lose, so we'll have to avoid that. So yeah, we have this port in front of us who needs to protect it. We cannot put it into the party. We have three slots here behind where we can put it down. And yeah, this is interesting. I'm already having lots of fun narrating this. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this kind of thing. So yeah, we're going to go into the first level here and uh, replicating slime, summon a slime on counter. So as we go through this game, we will learn about the mechanics. Counter is what happens when you hit an enemy and it survives a hit. So the first boss here will be summoning little slimes every time you know. You, you rack it. Oh, here we have the compendium, the book of champions. Here you can see all the all the un currently unlocked uh, heroes that can, well, champions that can come and help us out. They come in three different levels. You can level up heroes in this game. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Some settings. Okay, here we see the sound and music on 100%. That was a huge mistake. I left it there and uh, after I recorded the first episode, I was I was so like drawn into this game, I had to just play more, I didn't even check the sound and well, here we are. <laughs> here we are with me narrating and some music in the background, no no, no sound effects. This is not fully representative of the game. If you want to see the full representation, you can check out the fifth video, I believe, or was it sixth? I don't know. I will have in the comments uh, writing down. So yeah, moving character does not exhaust them. So we can, you can, at the start of the fight, you can position yourself. You can see what the enemies are and where they're situated. So we got some slimes here. Characters will automatically attack. Yeah, okay. Characters will automatically attack the nearest enemy in their lane. Click on an allied character to move them. Some characters, such as followers, can only attack from the front column. Other characters can only attack from the back column. Hover over a character to see which unit they will attack. Select the attack button when you're ready. So yeah, you position your people and then they will go and smack the enemy in front of them. It's like a tactical game. I mean, yeah, it's it's not an auto battler. I don't think so. So yeah, 
props to developers they they like did one thing and then they were humble and said it's like an auto battler but really is like a tactical game so yeah here we can see that once the follower dispatched of the ooze it uh, uh, the second one actually got hit the boss and then uh, the boss spawned a little ooze in front of it and uh, well the one on the top row we have nothing there so it went for the boss so for my hero you can re-engage party members between rounds unlike the start of the battle characters that are moved between rounds will become exhausted skipping their next attack knowing when to rearrange your party and when not to is critical to surviving so we already got one hit on our hero here that's like like super bad i don't know why i let that happen but i don't know i was just learning the game i was like just being relaxed exploring and stuff like that but anyway our druid here the one in the wolf cloak summons two doves so they will be blocking my uh, the attacks going to my hero now my followers can easily dispatch most of the stuff here i guess i don't know i was so worried so yeah the doves do not attack they Oh yeah, each character has a speed. If you press shift, you can see the order in which the attacks will, will happen. So I'm trying to figure out things here and like, I'm tr actually trying to figure out how to do this fight without losing anyone. And uh, yeah, I, I actually did not know at this point, if you lose a, a champion, they actually don't, they resurrect. The only thing is that a champion that dies during the fight, well dies, gets knocked out, cannot gain uh, an experience flask for it, but a little bit more about that later. So yeah, we have a barrel in the top row which will block one of our, our hits, uh, we spawn two doves which can block enemy hits, we have two followers in front, and yeah, we need to do two more damage to their boss and we need to like do one damage to kill these oozes in front of it, so yeah, I'm like trying to figure out, so this one attacks there, when you hover over a character you will see where they will deal the damage, and yeah, I put the dove there, okay, I put a damage character behind where it cannot attack just to like uh, protect it from dying so now the plan is to kill these two oozes in the bottom and the middle row and then the top one will kill the 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 dove okay and then my hero attacks the boss which spawns another ooze and well now their hero is pretty much exposed uh, if a character has no valid target they will attack the enemy hero instead the battle ends when a hero is defeated right so that's like the main like sort of a rule of the game right okay got it got it got it we are fine we are fine humor of the past we are fine don't worry this game is way easier than it seems right now uh, i went into this thinking this will be like a very hard roguelite um it is kind of hard but uh, i felt like i had a lot of room to make a party that i wanted so uh, i will tell you right in advance i came f quite far in this first run i qu came quite far so yeah stick uh, stick around and see collect your loot after a battle any dead party members will be revived and damage party members will heal however to to your hero uh, damage to your hero is permanent i will also have the link to the unlist okay we also got three gold here i will also have a link to the unlisted uh, video that is the original video that i made you can watch it if you want you can hear me talking if you like listen carefully but music super loud so you're cool really if you want to watch the original you can so here's the shop campfires campfires let you hire and dismiss characters uh, move a character into your party to hire them you can dismiss characters by selecting them then selecting dismiss character right so we have one more room in our party for another character we have four gold so we can buy any of these we can also buy healing flask which heals our hero for one hp that we so so stupidly lost in the first fight so now we're gonna be checking out recruit or dismiss characters right click to unequip items we don't have any items yet <laughs> well technically this is not a shop this is like a recruitment camp you can refresh it for one gold if you like uh, or you can buy something from the current uh, current roster there's like a lot of characters in the game and you can like cycle through them and find one which you like uh right so i guess i don't know why i went into settings now oh yeah i was right the game was going super slow like i didn't like how the animations were slow i felt like it's the game super slow it's gonna take ages to get anywhere so oh secrets interesting what do I do with that? Come on, Neo, don't leave the secrets on. There we go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was setting so bad here. So yeah, I was looking for a way to speed up the game. I was very worried that it's way too slow. So yeah, I didn't find it, but the game will give us that tool soon. 
So here we are checking our uh, our followers and we realize that uh, two of the dudes we have actually suck a lot. If this character kills an enemy, gain one gold. Tanner, level one human fighter. When I saw this, I was like, oh my god, what is this? This is amazing. I, I'm like trying to compare them here. So we got the Berserker level one dwarf fighter, attack for one front only. Uh, when the, he gets hit, he gets one power. And this thing trigger all allied doom effects at this point. I don't even know what doom effects are, so I'm like, I don't know, dude. If I want to like do well in this game, I might as well pick up the dude which gains me gold on kill, right? So, yeah, uh, like, uh, spoiler alert, I'm gonna be picking up the Tanner here, the level 1 human fighter. It can attack from any row. It has two attacks, which is way more than any of my dudes. And it also gives me one gold when I kill the enemy. At this point, I'm like, that's OP. We're gonna be doing really well with this character. So yeah, next like two, three, four videos will be me trying to squeeze out every single piece of gold we can with this standard dude. So yeah, that will be like, this will be a mess to narrate. But we'll see, we'll see. So okay, we have a Aziel, has plus one attack for each allied skeleton, follow up, summon a bone pile. Okay, we got Aziel and then we got the rat suit. When an allied beast dies, summon a dire rat. So this is really interesting. Like, I'm here like, dude, this dude summons more enemies. So we can like get infinite gold on this next fight. So we're gonna go for rat dude and we're gonna kill like a million rats, get rich, and then after that we're gonna steamroll the game, right? That's the plan. I'm like, I can't believe this broken shit ass game, right? No, no, it's not. It's not. Soon we will find out it's not really that simple, but hey. So yeah, here we go. He's well protected. Okay. So we got some uh, some obstacles. You can destroy obstacles, but as you can see they have 5, 2 and 2 HP and the enemy's attacks of course go through them and then there is a little die rat in front uh, one uh, attack six defense okay so I'm trying to figure out who goes who attacks what hello well so I want to kill the rat with the tether so mm. what is what am I thinking right now trying to optimize this thing at some point okay so here we can see the speed the little rat goes first oh i guess i don't want my tanner to get damaged too much right yeah but he can the tanner can take two damage so it's safe for him to stand here he can take uh he can take a hit from the rat and the boss and also kill the rat if i really want to i can put the tanner behind one of the acolytes uh, so it protects me. So I guess this is the speed tutorial. This is the first time enemies attack faster than I do. So there is a message. Oh yeah, I do decide to put an accolade in front of Tanner. I feel like Tanner is my goal to like great success here. So I will try to like get as little damage as possible from them. Okay. And then yeah, I'm like these dudes will attack my Tanner. I'm gonna put the accolade in front. Yes. Let's see if I actually did it. This will be interesting. It's been like 10 days since I recorded this and for 10 days I was trying to find time and trying to figure out what to do with this game. Like one option was to like replay it again from the scratch, but then of course I would be like knowing everything. There we go, I put the Acolyte in front. I'm so proud of myself. So now the Acolyte will tank two hits. Characters with high speed attack first. You can view the attack order by holding A or hovering over the attack order icon in the top right. So Tanner can attack from the back row. I think he might be a little bit overpowered. So now the rat will strike my accolade. Oh, the animations are so slow, dude. And then the accolade will strike the rat, but not kill it. And then this one down there will strike the barrel. And then there we go. Uh, my uh, rogue tanner actually killed the rat and got a coin. The enemy boss uh, spawns a new rat every time a rat dies. Okay, here we get our doves. Great. Are we reading this? Yes. Moving characters and your hero between rounds is critical to surviving. Move units to protect vulnerable allies or to take them down the dangerous foes. But plan ahead, characters that move will become exhausted and skip their next attack. Great. So I'm like, uh, now I'm calculating how many rats can I kill before enemy boss starts killing people. So I'm like, okay, I can move the tanner here, but he will not attack right away. He will get exhausted, but I still want the gold, right? So I'm like, these doves don't do anything. So we're gonna put the dove here to protect the tanner. 
I don't know if at this point I know that killing the barrel gives gold as well. It actually does. So I might not know this at this point in the game. I didn't try it yet. I'm trying to figure out where to put my tanner. Okay, I put it in front to take one shot. So he will get hit twice by the rat. Once now and once next round. He will survive and kill the rat and you get another coin. So that's good. Boss will kill the dove. And these two in the bottom will start working on the boss. Okay, so it's not infinite cash like I first thought. I also didn't realize that the druid only summons doves after the first round. So here I was like, okay, we'll just summon a whole bunch of doves. I don't know. It's been a while. So here the rat hits and we are exhausted so we can't do anything. I, our dove at strikes, but for zero, then we get two hits in on the boss here. Okay, then the boss will kill the, the dove. We destroy the barrel. Okay. There we go. And now next round, the rat will hit the rogue. Rogue will kill the rat and we'll do some damage on the boss. Uh, we'll actually kill the boss here. I forgot that my hero will attack and kill the boss. So uh, I could have played this better. I could have gained a little bit more coins here if I wanted. So the, the rogue heals the rat, the tanner. Oh no, the rat spawns. Okay, that's great. That was so lucky. <laughs> so now we can do all of that maybe once more i don't know let's see if i figure it out so exhausted heroes can't attack and followers can't attack with from the back row and you can also exhaust your hero so we put the acolyte in front of the rat to take the hits and i will probably put the tanner behind him to go and kill the rat oh or maybe i just decide to just kill the boss with the tanner and but we can't kill the boss with the tanner because he's exhausted oh no the rogue's exhausted Oh boy, I could have played this better. I could have gained more gold here. But at this point, I'm still learning the game. So I don't know. And it wasn't, yeah. So, okay. So we got two gold pieces from the tanner. We got three from the boss. I mean, it's not too bad, right? And we get a potion of experience. Gain plus one XP. Characters that die this battle can't gain XP consumable. So I was laughing here. I was like, <laughs> characters that die can't get experience. Like, what a joke, right? I was like, characters that died are dead, and of course they can't gain experience. And I kind of missed the tutorial message that told me earlier that I can revive my characters. Yeah, that was like a huge miss. So yeah, here I'm like, ah, dead characters can't gain experience, who would have guessed that? So I'm trying to figure out who to give the experience to. You need to give somebody three experience flask in order to level them to level two. I'm like, I'm like this standard dude, is like so great. We're gonna keep him forever, probably, or for a very long time. It's probably a good idea to give him that. Followers and the hero can't gain experience, and we can also give it to the druid, right? So this is a mistake, by the way. Like, I should give it to the druid here. I don't know that yet. Uh, Tanner is not uh, much stronger on level 2, and you want to get rid of it later once you get enough gold. There are way more powerful characters in the game. Druid's actually pretty good, so... Armored gloves, so we got an item. Plus one health, battle start, gain two armor. Uh, armor uh, gives you like uh, uh, basically a buffer for damage. So whoever has, I will probably give this to my tanner. Dude. Tanner? Yes, good. We agree, nice. So we got four HP now and two armor at the start of the fight. Armor at the start of the fight will uh, buffer for two damage. And then it goes away. Armor is only for one round. But this lets us tank a hit at the start of the fight and then smack, smack back. It's basically almost as good as HP in most circumstances. Dungeon boss, restorative ooze. When an ally dies, restore one health. Okay. So here I'm like, I'm definitely killing its, uh, its allies. Uh, I take a look at this fight and I'm like, this is pretty easy. Um... I'll probably, I'm probably trying to calculate how to kill both oozes with the tanner here to get two gold and then kill the boss as well without losing anyone. We also have two doves, so I'm probably fine doing some hits on the boss before I actually... Um... So, tanner on the ooze, right? And then some damage on the boss and then uh, move the tanner to kill another ooze block the damage with an acolyte or something so we don't get hit on our hero uh, that would be the tactic here pretty nice and simple fight we can get three coins out of this one easily okay we block the hit up above okay we're gonna block the hits with acolytes i could block with tanner but that doesn't make much sense because with the tanner i want to like yeah 
I'm here like, yes, we can do some damage on it. <laughs> okay. Everything seems fine. We're gonna summon two doves in the second round. They can block some damage as well. Let's see if we get maximum amount of coins here. I'm very curious. Like, I proud myself in being a very good tactical gamer. Oh, this is not... No, no. No, dude, really? Oh my god. Like, I feel you guys. You have to watch this shit. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Whew. I'm like... I'm probably trying... Oh. I, I forget. I forgot. Like, here I'm probably like... Okay, we're gonna kill the bots anyway. There's no way not to kill it. I forgot that I can exhaust all my characters and the hero to stop them from doing damage and give time to the tanner to kill the oozes. This is something I will still learn. Okay, this is a mistake. I don't like this. So the ooze in the top row dies and not from the tanner. Uh, I, I can't. I can't. This is so humiliating. Bye bye one more gold. Oh wait! He summons two oozes? I missed that. Where did it say that? Oh, it says it on the ooze. Okay, then maybe it's not such a clear cut. Maybe then it's not such a clear cut. Okay, I apologize to my past self. Uh, there's enough enemies to kill and to gain gold from. Uh, way more than enough. Okay, now we have to block the middle row with the dove probably. So we put... Yeah, nice, nice. I like that move. So we block the boss attack with the dove. Uh, we kill the, the one in below with my, my tanner. Now I have to figure out, I have to figure out, like, how many of these do I want to kill. Oh, I decide, I decide two is enough, it seems like, yeah. I'm a little bit worried that, let's see. If I want to be greedy, I would move the druid from the top row to the bottom row to exhaust him. So we, oh, we actually do that. Nice, nice, nice. So it is me playing, who would have guessed that, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I decided I'll, I'll go half and half. I'll kill one ooze with not a tanner. I guess I calculated that it would be really hard to kill both of the oozes on top and the boss with a tanner because I just don't have enough tanking potential to tank all the boss hits, right? Because we need to, want to tank one hit now, then tank another hit when we switch lanes, tank two hits from the oozes on the top as well. Yeah, I, I think I calculated I just don't have enough tank edge here. Okay, so the boss kills the dove. Now we probably move the tanner with the with the dove and put the dove in the in the middle to tank another boss hit. Yes, okay. Good, I like this. It's it's alright. We missed one gold so far, I think. No two. But there's no way we would be able to pull that off. Okay, we move this one down. Great. We do do two damage to the boss. Tank one hit from the small ooze. Mm-hmm. And then next round we kill the ooze. We tank boss damage with the druid. And that's it. Or with the tanner, doesn't really matter. I'm probably trying to calculate if I can kill it next round. I can, I think. Not sure if the order of the attacks will be fine. Yeah, I should press shift here to see the order of the attacks. Although I'm not sure if the order of the attacks changes from round to round. That's one thing I didn't fully realize. Like, characters have speed, but I don't know if the speed is rolled on or is it always like the same. It might be always the same. Okay, so we go like this. The dove will tank the boss head. Good. Uh, Druid and my boss will do some damage on their boss. Taking it down to 2 HP. Okay. So this round, I want to kill the small ooze with the tanner. And I need to tank the hit from the boss. I can tank the hit from the boss with my Druid. Okay. I exhaust one of my Acolytes, so it doesn't kill the boss, so it goes down to 1 HP. And then I finish it off with the rogue next round. Interesting. <laughs> there we go. And then the rogue goes before the boss, and we kill the boss before it can kill any of my dudes. I still don't know here that my dudes actually resurrect. So over here I check the initiative. So it goes Acolyte, Acolyte, Druid then rogue then my hero then the enemy hero and with this setup i can just press attack and everything happens as i want it if i'm a little bit worried here i might put acolyte in front of the druid just in case yes okay dude like 
Oh my god. <laughs> I'm guessing all my moves. This was 10 days ago, by the way. And I played this game a lot. Okay. So here I am. If something goes wrong, I didn't understand something in the game, then the Acolyte dies instead of the Druid because Acolyte's kind of shitty, right? Okay. So we attack, kill the boss, get one more coin. And we already have nine coins. We are super rich right now. We are super rich. And yeah, there goes the boss victory. Da -da 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 -da. Some sound. Maybe I should do some sound effects like splash. So we get three gold again. We got one more experience. I'm gonna stay consistent here. Give it to my tanner. If I played again, I would give it all to my druid. Uh, I have not 12 gold right now. I'm gonna go to the campfire to. Um... I have no idea what this dude on the left is. But it's not a fight, I think. When you hover over it, so here I was thinking the game is bugged. I went over the dude on the left and he didn't say to me what it does. So this must be like a merchant or a secret or something like that. Uh, but uh, I go to camp for anyway. Oh, the, the game speed unlocked. Okay, I was very happy with this. So you can increase the game speed, the animation speed. And that's needed because otherwise it goes super slow. And I will increase it to like X3 or something. Right, so we're gonna go to the campfire and we're gonna try to, we're gonna replace our followers with, with better characters here. Yes, Niamh, do it, do it. We got plenty of gold. I'm very happy at this point with my gold edge. Right, so let's see what we have. Oh, we got, ooh, this is really nice. So we got a potion of lesser healing, which we don't need right now. We got a divine protector, level one human fighter. When an ally summoned, give them shield. Shield, the next time this character will take damage, it doesn't. This is like insane synergy with my doves. Like, I, my doves can tank four hits now. Uh, okay, dude, yeah. Like, what, what are we thinking here? Right, Mage of, Mage of the Sun. Gain double the amount of power. The next attack deals more damage. So when this dude gains power, it gains double power. But we need somehow to give it power for that to make sense. I mean, it's probably better than my follower, but... Cleric of the Rose. Hope. Deal one damage to the nearest enemy in this lane. Hope. Does something when an allied character's health increases. So this game has, like, this a lot of these combos and tactics and, like... Your goal usually is to like try to put together a nice combo. Yeah, sorry, my humidifier, the humidifier was doing strange sounds, so I had to like make a cut and continue recording this. So I'm now going into the Book of Heroes and I'm checking out uh, different classes and what they do and trying to figure out what would be a good combo. Yeah, here we find the dude, gain double amount of the power. And then I'm like, hmm, what are the chances if you refresh the campfire to actually get... Oh, do I do I check the level 2 and 3 variants of these characters? That would be useful. Times hard 0. Times hard 0, yes, yes. Okay, I don't check it out yet. That's alright. That's totally and utterly fine. So yeah, this, is game, this game is all about putting strong uh, party combos together both through the characters and the items you can equip on this. I didn't see an item yet, so I don't know exactly how they work. But here I'm like, dude, there's no way that we don't pick up the protector, right? It synergizes with my doves uh, and it has a lot of HP. It can tank for my tanner. I'm gonna grab the divine protector here. Only question is, once we pick up the divine protector, what else do we pick up? That part, I don't really remember. Okay, we pick up the... Okay, the part is full. First, we need to dismiss somebody. So, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Yes, you just drag and drop it down there. There we go. Nice. And we grab the Divine Protector. Look at him, how glorious he is. Little dude with a shield and a mace. And an ally summon, give them shields. That's really good. Okay. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, I have 10 more gold. What to do now? Do we buy a cleric? Do we buy the thing of the rose? Or do we refresh the campfire? Decisions, decisions. I will probably refresh the campfire at least once to see what we get. I don't feel like the synergy is really good here. Yeah, we don't have a way to increase the health and we don't have a way to gain power. So I'm like, let's refresh and let's see what we get. Steel Summoner, level 1 Elemental Mage. After the first round, summon a lesser Metal Wisp. So I'm like, yay, more summons! That can't be bad, right? That's amazing. Another synergy. When an enemy gains poison, deal 1 damage to them. Okay. How do we give poison? I don't know. Deal 1 damage to random enemy. Doom. Does something when an enemy character dies. 
So I'm like, dude, I don't want that. That will accidentally kill people that my tanner has to go and turn into some leather to sell it. And I'm like, sure, let's grab another tank here and we're gonna get another uh, minion to summon. That's gonna be amazing. Right, right. After the first round, summon a lesser metal wisp. Give another ally in this lane, plus one armor. To me, this sounds amazing. So we're gonna pick it up. However, we have one problem. We don't have enough room to actually summon three things so this is a mistake i should not be picking up the the elemental sum steel summoner here i will pick it up if i remember correctly it's gonna be useful it has five hp it can tank a lot but the its ability will not trigger so we basically have a dead ability in our party so here i'm like dude this one can tank for the tanner then it can get even more gold you're gonna get so many good characters and here we go oh dude well, it's alright, I guess. It's still an upgrade. It's still an upgrade. So basically, this is now a follower with 5 HP. Basically. And if somebody dies in the first round, then the Wisp will be useful. But still, it's like... I was so happy when this happened. I was not aware that it's not as strong as I was thinking. There is no room to, to summon the Wisp. We only have two spots and the Druid will summon the... The druid will summon first, I guess, or something like that. Okay. Right. Are we done? I'm like so happy about this thing. I'm like, this will do that, and that will do that, and okay. Uh, no use of health, no. No use of health because we're on full. I was checking maybe there's some inventory or something. I might uh, refresh the campfire to see if there's like anything else interesting here. Yeah, I'm curious, so we refresh it. We just waste some gold here. Butcher, when this character kills an enemy, if you restore one health to unknown heroic damaged allies. That's interesting, but I already want all my kills to go to the tanner. Restore one health when somebody dies, okay. Lightning adapt, when this character gains power, deal one damage to random enemy. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, there's a lot of stuff with power, there's like this and that. But I'm pretty happy with my party right now. Not sure if we're gonna refresh once more just to see what there is. But I don't see anything here as better than what I already have. Oh, give a random allied beast plus one attack. Or when any character dies, gain plus one attack. Okay. I think I will go for the left one. But now that I'm looking at these things, the right one will probably be easier. Oh no, we go for the left one because left one we know it has allies and we want to turn them into skins and sell them right with my tanner. So yeah, we go left. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Dungeon boss, bitter tooth, follow up. So follow up is what happens after they attack and he has a lot of rats and I'm like rubbing my hands together. I'm like, mm, good, 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 good. This is the first fight in which I will actually struggle a little bit. We'll see soon what I'm talking about. I put the tanner in front. Okay, it's gonna tank two attacks from the rats. Okay, it has armor, so we don't have to worry. And we have like very tanky enemies. So here I'm like, dude, whatever, right? Uh, not sure if we... I'll probably put my druid and hero down so they start working on that vase. What I want to do here is not to kill rats with anything but the tanner, hopefully. No, I changed my mind. Okay, this is some hard math going on right now. I'm like trying to think three or four turns in advance and spoiler alert, I fail badly. Oh, really? For real? No way. No way. Don't do this. Why would I do this? No way. No way. Come on, move the tanner back up. I don't know what you're thinking, but the tanner has to be killing rats, not destroying its dagger. Oh no, please don't. Please don't. This is the first huge thing I really do not agree with. Oh, thank god. Oh my god. I don't know what I was thinking there, even considering that. So the tanner needs to kill a rat each round if possible. It's alright if we don't do it each round, I'm all fine with that. But, uh, okay, so I guess we decide that we cannot kill all four of them, it's too much. So, uh, I will kill, okay, dude, speed up the game. Top right corner, we got the speed up thing. I guess I will let this first round go f normally. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, we're checking five speed. I'm a little bit, that's a little bit too chaotic. So we put it back to three or something. Let's go. Two. Okay, let's try with two first. Okay, now we got our doves. So yeah, we killed two rats. It's all right, I guess. So Tanner will gain a second gold piece now. So now we put, uh, okay, now I'm really confused what's going on. I forgot that my Divine Protector is giving shields to people. And uh, right now I'm taking something really weird which makes no sense at all. I'm thinking that my Metal Wisp which didn't spawn actually gave shields to my doves. Something crazy like that. And uh, I'm very confused about it. Uh, but the, the, the Protector gave the shields to my summons which are two doves. And the Metal Wisp was not summoned because there is no room. Right. At some point, I'm gonna realize that uh, Metal Wisp is not getting summoned and that the character we just bought is just like a 1-5 meat bag and not much else. Okay, we put the doves in front to tank the damage. That's probably the mistake. The rat does only 2 damage right now, so it would be, be better to soak that with the protector and then use the shield to soak the bigger attacks. That way, I could probably gain 3 coins here. But I decide not to do that. Um... It's interesting watching myself and finding ways to improve my gameplay here. Any characters without the ballot attack target will attack a hero, yeah. And then he gives... Oh yeah, now I'm checking the wisp. I'm like, dude, where's my wisp? <laughs> <laughs> what happened with the wisp? And right now I'm also confusing armor with shields a little bit since I'm inexperienced and like there's like a thousand things going through my brain. 500 of them being how to maximize my gold gain in this fight and uh, yeah i'm talking like gibberish here like nothing really important so the rogue yeah it's the tanner tanner kills the rat on top we tank the damage from the boss we tank the damage from the rat and that's fine right okay we play on 2x speed now i'm like that's too slow we go to 3x speed good uh right and okay the rat hits for three now we're fine, we can easily tank that still with the Dove. Uh, I don't know if I know yet the trick how to exhaust everyone so they don't do damage. So we can stall the boss and like kill the rat on the bottom. I feel like I, I probably didn't do it. I think I will be doing a lot of math here trying to figure out if I can actually kill the ways and then the rat and then the boss and kill do both kills with the Tanner. Um, I think it's doable, looking at this screen right now, without any problems. We can tank 3 hits with the Dove. Uh, I don't know, I think I'm gonna go for it and I'm gonna mess it up. It, it's even worse. Uh, Somebody is gonna die here. Somebody is gonna die here, I don't remember who. Uh, but anyway, the the Steel Dude can still tank a little bit. Okay, I moved the uh, my hero so it gets exhausted. And here I realized I can exhaust my hero not to do damage to the boss. I put a druid in front. Okay, that's so weird. Okay, fine. And now we actually need help on the on the metal urn. We actually need help. But we don't have any help. I should have put somebody down there to help destroy the urn. That was a mistake. So it's gonna take me way too many turns to actually destroy the urn and then destroy the rat. And yeah, now I kind of realize, I kind of realize that I will not be able to do it. I'm still like staggering the boss, that's all right. Problem is, why do we move this? Okay, I don't wanna do damage to the boss, but I can do a little bit. Just leave it there, dude, just leave it there, okay. But that's not the problem though. The problem is that the rat's faster than my rogue. So, yeah, so we cannot kill the urn in time and then kill the rat as well. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm trying to, I'm starting to realize it. So if we took that one extra attack earlier on, on the protector, it would be fine. Or if I put some extra damage in the bottom row, so we can kill the urn and then we get like an extra turn. Not sure if that was possible though. But here I'm like, oh no, my gold coin, I'm not gonna get it, or am I? Uh, I'm looking at my protector and I'm like, it's too late now. Yeah, and I decide to cave. I decide, I don't... At this point I realize the only way, the only way to kill the rat with a tanner right now is if I sacrifice somebody to the rat next round. Am I actually considering sacrificing the still summoner to the rat? 
I'm actually considering that. I realize that he's not very useful and I'm fine letting him die, but dude, then I would play with only four people, so I don't do it, right? I'm really curious if I do it or not. At some point, one of my dudes will die and then I will realize, hey, <laughs> my dudes revive after a fight and that will be like, that will be an important uh, knowledge for me, even though there was a tutorial message telling me that um, that I can do it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking about. I'm checking the ability of the Steel Summoner and realizing he's not summoning the Wisp. So he's just a huge punching bag right now. And I'm trying to figure out, do we get one gold from the Rat and sacrifice the Steel Summoner for it or not? And then I should not sacrifice a person for it for one gold. That doesn't make any sense. So I hope I don't do it. Since I know that he revived, that's the correct move, but having my knowledge back then makes it not correct, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to take some damage. Uh, right, but what's the plan here, dude? Oh, I realize I can't even kill the boss with the... <laughs> oh, <laughs> and now I realize, oh, wait, something's wrong. I'm like, the rat's gonna kill something. Oh no. <laughs> and now I have to sacrifice something. Okay, I put myself into an impossible position. I just realized the rat goes first and kills something. Now I have to decide what he kills. So hopefully I decide to kill summoner. There we go. And little do I know that he's gonna revive. I'm gonna be so happy. Right. Uh, okay, we put the protector in front of the boss. And then exhaust everyone else, please. Exhaust the boss. Yes, nice. There we go. So the the steel summoner dies here, but he's gonna come back to life, don't worry. Okay, and now we put the tanner behind the okay, we exhaust everyone else. Oh we do it like this. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, we kill the boss with the tanner, and that's it. We get another cold coin. Nice. And right, we defeated the enemy hero. My steel summoner is gonna come back to life. Here it is. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> uh, and yeah. And here I'm like, I'm like, I can level up my my tanner now. I can level up my tanner now. That, that's pretty good. But it's not really that good because he doesn't even get any damage. I guess he gets a little bit of HP. I think maybe speed. Oh yeah, now I realize that the, the dude came back. I'm like, what? He survived? Okay, we level up the Tanner, right? So I should have checked first what the Tanner levels up into before we actually level it up. Yeah, now I'm thinking, like he was here and then he's there. Like he came back to life. Yes, exhausted. So maybe I tried to give him experience. <laughs> and here I'm like, dude, uh, now that jokes makes like absolutely zero sense that, that people can be right. There we go. So we level up, let's see what we get. And it's bad. We get like one speed and one health and that's it. This is the worst level up in the game. Like uh, level two tanner is perfectly balanced, I think. Well, it's more balanced than level one tanner. Level one tanner is just broken. Level one tanner does way too much for what it is. I think the level one tanner should probably have like one attack or something. But anyway, uh, we're gonna continue here. Uh, Tanner is feeding us like a million gold. What's this? Battle start, gain shield. Okay, this is like really powerful. So shield basically negates. Shield stays on you for whole fight until it gets broken. You can give it only to the mages. Uh, luckily enough, we have two mages in our group. Oh yeah, this is my first equipable item. No, second one. Okay. Never mind. I forgot we have the gloves, right? So we can give it to the druid or to our protector. Uh... I guess I'm gonna give it to the Druid, because Druid has less HP. I, I guess that makes sense. We cannot give it to the to the Warrior, we try it. I always try things, just in case, to see if the things are working as I understand them. Okay. Metallic Ooze, round end, gain one armor, then move. Okay, this was a little bit tricky, he's moving around a lot. The enemy hero can gain armor. Armor acts like temporary hit points, however, armor only lasts until the end of the round. Right. 
so I think here I will try my theory to see if killing barrels gives gold coins and I think it does they are considered enemy pieces oh yeah you can reset the battle once uh, so if you mess up the battle you can reset it I realized that at some point in the game but not yet uh, at this point I see the button but I'm like I'm thinking right away what's the cost for that right so yeah we got an enemy oh really yeah I do this because I have no idea that killing barrels gives coins no 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 we'll try it we'll try it okay good yeah 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 that's definitely what I'm thinking about is killing barrels gives coins we should do as much damage to the boss we can because he has a lot of HP good good so we're gonna summon some doves, then we're gonna use the doves to tank the damage. I'm gonna use the, the tanner to kill all the barrels. We're gonna get like a whole bunch of coins here. Uh, yeah, we are super rich. If at this point I knew that the, that the game has very powerful uh, like items you can actually buy in the shop, I would be amazed, I guess. But I don't know that yet. I, I, I thinking at this point I'm thinking gold is only for heroes. But I'm still happy. I'm like we're gonna refresh a lot. We're gonna find something strong, something that synergizes well with summons or something like that. Right. Well, let's go. I guess it's okay. This is on all right. We can like tank like a million hits. I should probably put the hero in the middle though, to do a little bit more damage to the boss. I mean, yeah, it's gonna do 3 damage to that dude. Yeah, let's try out if the barrels uh, give coins, yes, yes. Come on, hero is in the wrong position. Or maybe I decide, yeah, I decide I probably can't kill all 4 barrels. So I put 2 in the top to actually kill 1 barrel. Okay, I'm like, we can kill 1 barrel with the dudes. Eh. It's not like damage would get wasted though, it would go into the boss, so... Hmm. Okay. So if I leave it like that, I better kill two barrels. On the top, because if I only kill one, that makes no sense. I could be killing it with one dude one at a time and putting some damage on enemy hero with my hero. We'll see what I do here. Okay, we take three damage, now the boss is gonna move up or down, gain one armor. Okay, and now, okay, I can take one damage, I can take one hit with the Tanner, not sure if I'm gonna risk that, let's see, I should definitely leave the Tanner where it is, moving the Tanner doesn't do much, we just waste time. And in hindsight, putting the Tanner in the front row was maybe not a great idea, but still, it's alright. If I move it, it was a bad idea, if I leave it, then it's alright, if I take three damage here. At this, at this point, I probably should have I probably figured out that I got a coin from the barrel, right? So I leave it like this. I kill one of the barrels. Yeah, I'm very worried about this fight. The enemy has a lot of HP and I'm scared. It happens. We are all humans, right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna take three damage. Okay, kill a barrel, kill another barrel up there. So I guess we lose two coins here, probably. Yeah, I think we lose two coins. Okay. I'm fine with this, we're just gonna smack it down, yeah. At this point I'm happy I'm still alive, and this this first uh, encounter with this game is still ongoing. I have 16 gold, I'm like, dude, whatever, I'll just kill this thing. Matt is too hard right now, not sure why, but I guess it is. And now I realize, like, dude, I have three more shields. I could have done this way better. Okay, we're gonna put the dove in front to take the tank the damage, there we go. And with the rest we're gonna hit, yeah, okay, good. And I'm gonna try to figure out next round or the round after that how to kill it with my tenor, hopefully. I'm gonna make some nice metallic letter here. Okay, it's gonna move, good. Okay, let's check the initiative, add up the numbers. Okay, so let's see. Dove first, Dove, then goes the Rogue, it doesn't kill it. So if the rogue does damage, then one more dude has to do damage. So we have to exhaust three people here. We also have to put the dove in front of the metallic dude. There we go. That's exactly what we want. Good. Nice. I think that's what we want, right? <laughs> that's what I would do if I would be playing now. Okay. And that's it. 
we have to we don't have to do anything the the tanner kills the boss we get the point i move the hero just in case but i know the hero goes after the tanner so okay nice we get another coin i could have gained way more here i have two more doves and a shield so that means we had like at least like um, at least like three more turns so yeah could have killed another barrel at least maybe two There we go, another one buys the dust, BAM! 17 gold, and then 3 more. <laughs> so... Okay. So I see a campfire, I do not realize that's the merchant on the right. If I knew that was the merchant and what he sells, we would go to the merchant here. So this will be a mistake. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out what to level up. I'll probably open the book here and check these three dudes and see which one is the best to level up. I think uh, I think I level up my druid here. I mean, not level up, give it one experience. I click on the wrong button. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna search for divine protector. It's right there, dude. Bottom row, second one. Okay, we go by the alphabet. I'm gonna find it eventually. There we go. Divine protector, dude. Are you blind? What are we looking for here? Yeah, that's all good and nice. Still summoner. We're looking for still summoner, maybe. I don't know. We realize that level 2 people have more item slots, right? Okay. <laughs> there is it. <laughs> I'm just talking about the book and what it does. Yeah, probably. So yeah, this is the book of champions. You can check every champion you unlocked in the game to see what he does and what hits level up. So here I realize that the tanner sucks. <laughs> I'm like... Oh yeah, I was try I was thinking should I level my tanner some more and then I realized he just gets one HP and a little bit of speed. That sucks. So yeah, I'm probably realizing right now that I made a mistake. Right, so we're checking some other people out for some reason. Right, Berserker. Cleric of the Dark, level 1 Dwarf Fighter. When this character kills an enemy gain shield. That's pretty nifty actually. Yeah, this one doesn't gain much. It gains a whole bunch of HP, but... Oh! Counter, plus 3 power, that's pretty good actually. So he gains 3 power every time he gets hit. Right, right, right. Okay, enough drooling over the game. There we go, through it. After first round, summon a dove twice. And Divine Protector. <laughs> and here I went, look, dude, this dude look, looks like Link from Legend of Zelda. Look at it. That I... Yeah, I'm trying to get a feeling like... What can we get? Oh, I decided? I decided to give it to whom exactly? To Divine Protector? Because he looks like Link? Or no, it has to be Druid, right? No, I'm like, dude, I need to do some more information here. There we go. Uh, so yeah, we realized that he's summoning like different different uh, creatures once he gets to level three. And these creatures are probably better than Doves. So I'm like, dude, let's do that, right? Druid, yes, nice. Druid, don't, don't. Tanner sucks, don't! Oh my god, don't! Don't do it, Neo, don't do it! Come on, do it! Oh, thank god, okay. Whew. Right, so Tanner is only useful while you're gathering gold. Once you get to the point in the dungeon that it gets too hard, you're probably better off. Okay, but I'm gonna make the cut here, it seems like. Yeah, so we're gonna end the episode here. So yeah, I was having a lot of fun with this run. So like, uh, I will be making it hot here. And yeah, come back for the next episode. Let me what you think about. Let me know what you think about this narrating format. I will have a link below to the real episode if you wanna check it out. But you will see the music is way too loud. Hopefully you enjoyed this, my first uh, play of this game and my narration of it. I had lots and lots of fun. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like the video and as always check out my other stuff and maybe subscribe if you find something worthwhile. I wish you all to have a wonderful day, do something nice, be kind to each other and let's make the world a better place. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next episode. The Neomers signing out. Bye bye.